happy right there. Yes. My favorite uh, electronic uh, bass, bass DJ has always been <laughs> Excision. Yes. The post about time. Isolation Tanks. Sure. Excision. Uh, Chris Ex- Figler loves Excision, by the way. Yeah, I know. I took him to two, two, two shows. With his missus? Yes, exactly. Oh, the nice. First time Is the, she a babe? No, absolutely not. But the first time I saw Excision <laughs> was a Smart Bar for 10 bucks. Dude, I love Smart Bar. Except their drinks are too expensive. Well, when I started going there, I, I'm i not going to get get in there. The first time I, I, I saw Excision, it was, I, I paid five bucks to, to see him. Wait, I thought you paid $10. Ten, five, yeah, it was 10 bucks. The sponsor's point. He's coming with two shows next, in, in February. He, he to was Smart Bar? No, um, it got Ballroom. Ooh, moving on up. Well, he he played there before when I w- w- it was like thirty five dollars a ticket. Now it's like seventy dollars a ticket plus tax. When the first time I, I saw Excision, it was ten bucks. Now he he, he wants seventy dollars plus tax. It's like I love his music, but I don't want to spend seventy dollars plus tax. It, it it gets to the point where you know he he is selling out because he cares about more money. But I also want to realize. Is it you would do that in his place? I am not spending seventy five dollars plus tax. Yeah, but if you're in that, his... yeah, isn't that what you want for the artist though? Like you don't want him just like doing shows at Smart Bar for ten dollars a head. Like oh, once I'm done here, I'm gonna go eat a chili dog at Wrigley'sville Dog across the street, and then sleep in my van. Like you want them. No, to, you want them to play the United Center. You want them to play Soldier Field. You want them to sell out, right? Absolutely not. Because when I saw him at Spot Ball, it was so heavy. It was so you know raw. When I when I saw him last time, it was his song was okay. But it, it's all about what you're talking about. What a bunch of people be that. Drunk. Well, Excision's an electronic musician. Yes. So there's not a lot of shit you can do with that in Smart Bar. If you do it in a bigger arena, you can have a light show. You can have a bigger visual arts show. And that's what he's all about. Well, yeah. that's why it's seventy dollars. Again, it's like I love his music. I don't want to spend that much for something. I, I wish we saw him k- kick an ass. I don't think I would spend five dollars on him. Well, it's not your jam, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, as a fan, like maybe it's out of your price range, but you've yeah. got to appreciate. Like you got to remember the good times. You, that's smart that's part. That's exactly why I I don't want to see him anymore because I, I remember that you know six time I've seen him was uh, was on a you know it was forty dollars a ticket. That was like seventy five. Yeah. What about some people who don't care about his music? It's the same thing with. Uh, do you guys know Deer Hunter? Yeah, no, I, I, I I I fucking love Deer Hunter, Colby, uh, Duomo, in our in our fucking band. Uh, got got us into it, and w- I I when I went to go see them, they were just getting big. It was at yeah. Metro, which is like what capacity? What three thousand maybe? Like Thirty five hundred. Yeah, with, with Dying Phoenix, that's no more than three hundred four hundred people. No, it's like three thousand, I think. Metro? No way. Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right, hang yeah. on. Yeah, pull me along. Then, all right, everyone sit tight. Yeah, but th- there's there's like a hundred people in the front row. Capacity of Metro Chicago. Venue. Metro Chicago's capacity is 1,100. Oh, oh. 1,100. 1,100. 1,100. So when I saw them, it was at Metro. It was sold out. And, yeah, 1,100. The year before that, they played at Empty Bottle, which is like 500. Yeah. And then now they're fucking playing United Center. Who would have, like, what the hell, you know? I, I think that's really cool. Am I the only one that's like? Well, no, I, I, I just love I just seeing that evolution. Uh, I mean, th- th- that's cool. I, j- I, I, it's, I wouldn't want to go see them at United Center though. That's just I, I don't get th- that was that was weird for me because to me, excision seems like something that has the potential to sell out from the beginning. Sure. Because a lot of people like to dance and a lot of people right. like festival. But to me, something like Deer Hunter, I don't know. It was just like a weird, darkish, weird kind of like cult status type of music that I, I just, I mean, like I mentioned it right here. I would have never thought 
for either of you would even know who a deer hunter is, but Bill, you said you know them. Mm-hmm. So it's just like that's why it was weird for me. Would I like it? Is it more electronic? No, no, it's like almost like hipster indie type shit. I don't understand. What, indie music is such a very yeah, yeah, yeah. Indie, yeah, no, it's a dumb uh, way to explain it. It's it's just like a. Uh, I don't know. What what would you? How would you explain it, Bill? Indie alt. What? Yeah, al- alternative, maybe shoegaze. Shoegaze, that's like, um, to me, like uh, Deftones. Oh, no, no, Deftones is metal. No, sho- shoegaze is not Deftones. But... I don't, like... I don't know. I see like 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 some sma- like some Smash Pumpkin songs is shoegaze. So what would you call Smash Pumpkins? A total of it. Alternative, yeah, yeah. Then. So uh, I just think that's like I don't know. I think it's really cool to be able to map like a group or an artist's success from oh now they're playing like three hundred person shows at Beat Kitchen to. Oh, now they're playing at Metro, which is 1,100 people. Yeah. Oh, now they're at House of Blues, which is like three, 5,000 people. You, you guys, then, you, I hate that, but how much, I, you know, I'm a big Sutton fan. They start off at, you know, playing like a small venue, like you said. Everyone they, starts off that way. They, they actually, Sutton actually played at the House of Blues. And then they went to the... Um, Wait, what's your point? That even something that's you know started you know yeah every band every is. every band starts but I don't understand how I'm st- I, why I I resent excision but I still love Slipknot well it's because you're petty yeah but I've seen excision six times I've seen you know I do love you know excision but I love Slipknot I, I guess I say excision and Slipknot all my two favorite you know really yeah. excision is your second favorite band Lamstein. All right, so where's Excision? Number three. All right, after Rammstein. Okay. Right now I have to say Dying Fetus. What's on? We're in a third right now. Wait, oh wait, Dying Fetus is the third? Yes. So where's Excision? Number two. No, you said <laughs> you said Rammstein was number two. I said Rammstein. No, you no. <laughs> you guys are ca- calling me in my bullshit right now. I just want the truth. So excision is number four. No, excision is number three. Uh, oh God! No. All right. So, <laughs> so kids, if you want to get mixed up with numbers, listen to excision. That's, that's <laughs> exactly what right. So no, but um, yeah, I I I don't know what I was gonna say. I, uh, well, I, I guess what I was going to say, uh, there, there's just bands like that alternative indie scene that you sort of feel like it's made for a certain group of people. Not made. It's ma- Yeah, it's made to succeed and go to a bigger venue, as, as Bill was saying. I, I forgot. Uh, well, I you, don't you think it's continue. made for that. It's, I not, think it's, it's just, not made for that. It, like, it, it's good to see them succeed is what yeah, you're saying. Yes. It's just that it, it's it's strange when it starts off. It's tr- like for okay. I guess what I'm trying to say, a band like Deer Hunter, for example. Sure. They really didn't change the reason why. For example, Pink Floyd too wasn't that big in the beginning. But the thing is, Pink Floyd went through like forty different fucking different, you know, phases. They start like Piper is like total Beatles psychedelic, like Sgt. Pepper psychedelic. Sure. Then it goes to you know they had their synth phase, they had their wall phase, and then there all that like difference between Roger and David, you know. The, so, but with with Deer Hunter, because I've listened to them, I like all their albums equally. I can't pick one that's good, and I listen to all of them all the way through. And I and it and it seems weird that they just stayed true to that beginning sound. That they, sure. That just you would think in one fucking year they would go f- from, you know. A uh, venue that's twelve hundred people to United Center, which is what twenty five thousand or some shit, something insane. Yeah, actually, I think I think United Center is like almost thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Yeah. So that's 20, around where so, Wrigley Field is. So I think Wrigley is like thirty three, thirty five. So so if here's a band that's playing for a decade, 
how does it take them a decade if they have that same sound to, sound to go from 1200 to fucking 30,000? You know? Um, that's just the nature of the business, I guess. Yeah. You think it would be uh, hypocrite? I would never see something not a, a not a center or a field. Yeah, you're a hypocrite. Or, 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 or do I have my limits? Because I just don't think of a venue like... You or Dino Bosco? Because Dino Bosco doesn't have his limits. I'm being honest. When, when, a, when a band gets to a Nida Center, where, you know, people, this it is they're just doing it for the money and not for the sound. I've always mm, been about the sound. They're doing it for the sound still. Oh, wow. You know what I like, too, is like, I, I got to say real quick, bands like Pink Floyd, when they go to a big venue, I like that they kind of slow down naturally because of age with writing new albums right. but it, but it also keeps that old spark in them that quality because you know usually fame and fortune ruins people into writing you know shittier music well the the <laughs> biggest venues band I, the, the biggest venue i've been to when when i saw Pearl jam at wigger field um back in 2013 sure and i i actually you know did you like it? Yes, no. Well, I didn't like. I, I actually think the concert was awesome. It was actually a a, a three hour rain delay. Uh okay. And you know. Yeah, but they couldn't help that. Like, they didn't play through the rain. They're they from couldn't. Seattle. They couldn't because the the rigged field didn't. You can't play in a in a in a in a downfall in a, in like. Sure. Yeah. Was the rain an even flow? It was like the storm was like almost like an hour and a half to two hours. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm sure. not picking up what you're saying right now. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy's spoken right now. Jeremy. No, but yeah. Uh, Should we get to the really offensive part of the show? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wait. You're not going to tell your jokes, are you? No, no, no. Okay. Well, before you tell your jokes, can I. It's can a little. I do, can I do something very quickly? Are you going to sing more BP or an interrupt? My, my cancer. Yes, talk about your cancer more. That's um, our Irish fans love that. It would be actually next month. It'd be two year going on cancer free. Right on, dude. Yeah. It, you it's know, huge. Which, all right. You know, putting us all. You know, beginning to uh, end of 2016 was a, you know, a big deal. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not the same. I had to test her cancer. I, I went for radiation. You know, I'm not still sure if I'm still cancer-free. But, you know, sure. uh, yep. you know, going for CAT scan, you know, if I'm I'm going on two years, you know, it's an unbelievable feeling when you still know that, you know, you beat that fuck out of cancer. Amen. Yeah. Can I ask uh, one thing? What? I think I was going to ask this the last time you talked about cancer. Do you have the option of getting like a silicone ball in place of the one that's gone? I have actually thought about that, but cancer doesn't. I mean, not cancer. Um, insurance doesn't cover it. Ah, uh, because it's like cosmetic. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I, I I talked to my doctor about this. He says, you know what? If you sleep with somebody, she's not even gonna notice. So why bother? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I wouldn't care. Yeah. I'm just curious if that's like an option. It is, but you know, you, you got it, it comes out of your po- your pocket. Yeah, like, exactly yeah. what I asked him. So, you know? how much is worth it to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, you know, she's not. You've got to know it. So, why you want to do it? I couldn't believe that shit when there were there were just fucking idiots getting ass implants because of uh, what was her name? It was it was like Snooki or Demi yeah. Lovato or Tina exactly. Tita Tequila. It or even kills me. I I am very bipolar. Ass ass implants. I love big butts. But an ass implant, and and you know, do you know what guys are doing now? What? Did you guys know this? They get calf implants. I actually knew that calf yeah. implants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in their legs. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I guess that's hot, dude. I've got rocking calves. Same here, man. Everywhere else, in my body is shit. Well, you know my what? Calves. Cheers. Almost going two years without being cancer free. Yeah. Cheers. A lot here, to me. here. So. Yeah, there's a- Clinkies. 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 I spell. don't have a bottle. Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever. No, it's cool. All right. So I've got a story to tell, and then I've yeah. got a joke. Okay. Okay. Can I can I share a story and then a joke? Of course. So this story takes place back in the... Interruption free, Ross. Yeah. Right. No more interruptions. We're celebrating uh, three minutes of interruption free. <laughs> yeah. Exa- here, here. Um... 
So when I was in school, and it was probably like fall of 2012, uh, there was a woman, and I used to always take night classes. So, you know, I was there like 20 years old. Yeah. And it would be me and a bunch of like 40-year-olds because the only people that ever took night classes were like the returning students, you know, the people that didn't finish their degrees yeah. and now they're looking to finish it after their full-time jobs. So it was me and a bunch of 40 year old women and one of them, her name was Mary and she and I got along really, really well. And so in the fall I had a class with her in the spring I had a class with her and then summer vacation I was gone. And then I came back the following fall and I had class with her and I noticed like I don't know what happened but her left arm had been amputated and I like you know like that's kind of like a startling change yeah and so finally I had to ask her like Mary what happened to your arm and she said, well, they found a tumor and they had to amputate, but it's okay. I'm all right now. That's So that's the cancer joke. Okay. You might have missed it because she's I, I all think, right, yep. as in no left. Anyway, <laughs> and that's a true fucking story, oh, mind yeah. you. Um, and my joke. I'm That's sorry, not a story. It's like a little one-liner. Yeah. Um. So when I die, I'm really hoping to die in a plane crash. Yeah. Because that means a free cremation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Phil, take it away. Oh, uh, I don't know. I th- I think I have two jokes I could have said. Well, they're not joke. I I see. This is why I don't do stand up. These are the two things that I wrote to fill up the six minutes of the stand-up that me and Bill would go to. Um, I think the first thing was going to be like, I was just going to open it up and be like, oh, yeah, I had three things. So the first thing was going to be, so, uh, yeah, I don't do one-liners, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't I don't really have a, I usually just tell really silly stories. I don't really have a pickup line, but most people find it very uplifting. And so uh, one thing that I've noticed, there's this whole trend going on that people are saying, uh, see, Ross, you're spilling your water all over your shirt. Oh, it, it, I'm just it, letting you know it wasn't me. It's water. It's, it's, it's not going to stain. All right. But, but, but you, were, you, were, you were gave me the whole history of how your shirt was made upstairs and how much you love it. Oh, shut up. Anyway, all right. So back to my story. No, so people already have this trend that, when you have a that, you know, people these days with beards, there's all these fucking young guys with beards going on, and they don't even know how to fucking change a tire. What kind of a man is that? <laughs> so, me. So, so, I, 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 and me. And me. I, 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 I guess I could slightly see that, but I think it depends on the length of your beard. Because if you have a ZZ Top beard and you're working on machinery, you might get your head decapitated if it gets caught in something. Or if you got a uh, personal experience, some weird bear trap sex toy. And yeah, uh, that's just a personal experience though. So it, uh, the point is that I, I think beards, it really depends on the length. And the reason why I take it a, uh, to a personal issue, I don't really know the answer if it makes you manly. But with me, I said, I made this pact that I, I think I'm like 215 right now pounds 215 pounds i said if i don't reach under 200 pounds in 2018 uh i can't i'm not, I'm not allowed to shave which is fucking two birds with one stone because if i'm getting Why is that because if i'm getting fatter my beard's gonna grow down to my titties and i have hairy nipples so i could have kelly like dread or braid them together Ooh. and then look like yeah, some man. character from battlestar galactica i feel know? like you and i have pretty similar body types am i I think so, I think so. Like are we, yeah, like yeah. Where yeah, I, I, I feel like, like where we I feel like we've stayed steady for the pace five years. Oh yeah, but we but we don't look out of shape, but we don't look fat. Right. Where it's like it's, average. Yeah, 
It's not that was it's how 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 are we supposed to, you're supposed to look at at all age. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ross, so you're an outside observer. I don't know how my body really looks, just as I'm sure like Phil kind of has like a weird impression of how his own body looks. Do you think Phil and I have the same sort of body type? Yes. Because like whenever I'm trying to describe myself to someone else, I always think like, well, I'm pretty close to Phil. Like, I think you're maybe a little taller than me, mm-hmm. but like beyond that, I think we've got the same sort of body thing going on. Yeah, which I think is why we're such good friends. Absolutely. You know, like roughly six foot tall. Actually, that's kind of weird because I I get into the biggest fights with people skinnier, or fatter than me. Really? I think so. So wait, do you not? Do you look at me and do you think like, oh no, Bill's way fatter than me? No. What's your impression of me? Because no, I feel I th- like we've always been pretty comparable. Yeah, I think we've been pretty. What is, what is the compliment? What? Pretty si- similar. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Similar, a- able to work. Yeah. With. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think so. Like, and that's just like it's not a compliment or an insult, but it's always like yeah. you know, like Phil and I are about the same physical page. Like I'm sure you're way way stronger than me, but I I I'm I'm trying to get to like I feel like I slightly the the thing I'd like to change is I have a beer belly, sure. And because I don't walk at all at a fucking office job, which I think you're in a similar situation. Exactly right. So it's sort of like I would I kind of want to get down to where I don't have a belly at all. Sure. What do you think of me? When you look at me, do I look like I'm? Oh, dude, you're slim as hell. Well, because I, w- I got up, I, I, I got, I was up to almost 190 now. Oh, now you I'm, poor thing. Now I'm, I'm almost down to 179, <laughs> 178, and that's um, eating eating better and um, yeah, you know my job. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I put cards. You know, sure. a lot of people don't realize, you know, how how hard it is. You know, yeah. Sometimes I, I feel I, the worst for the people who push cards in like a fucking blizzard. I do it. That's, you know? that's Ross yeah. out there. I so I've got fifty pounds and you Rabino. That's how I knew there was something wrong with Joe Spanos because he just was as jolly as fucking possible the, in can, that cold. Can I can I be honest with you? Yeah. When I I I love Joe Spanos. I have we have no problems with him. When I talk shit about him, is I I, I poke him and then and I do this in the butthole. No, in in the, his stomach. He said, "Ooh, his tummy." It's like. So you just like to poke him in the stomach? I don't like to poke him. I just said, you know, you. I always go, you know, do his stomach. Is this is this like during or after work hours? Doing work. It, it's like. So he's not like tied to a wall or anything no. while you're doing. Sure. I asked him. You know, I'm trying to get to realize that your stomach looks like you ha- you have twins. <laughs> well, here's twins? my question. He 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 does the same thing I do. And, you know, sure. And I don't he pokes you. I'm trying to say he, he has the same job I do. Gotcha. Oh. And I don't understand how he's so fucking heavy. He sometimes he does the same amount of cards, hours, and you know, and you know, and people who say to me, Ross, you don't eat like he does. He eats so much. He eats a shitload of like high sugar, high pizza. Like, yeah. And it's like that again, makes a difference. I used to have a, I still do, but I don't have it, a smartwatch. When I did two, three hours of cuts, I, I, I almost burned like almost a thousand calories. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of calories. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's how much I want to burn a day running. Uh, Well, here's my question for you, Ross. Do you consider yourself a disabled person? I'm always considering myself between normal and, and in a disabled world. I'm stuck in the middle. Okay, it's, uh, it's, a, it's always going to be a difficult situation because I'm a, I'm a whale. Uh, with, sure. What's Joe Spano's Frank Bodie? You know. Yeah. Bro- yeah. Bro- so, do you are they more disabled than you, or do you put them on like the same caliber? I think they're more disabled than me. Okay. Yes. Okay. But again, you know, I I, I have a disability, which you know I can't. You know, Sh- Get so a better wait, job. You have a disability, but you yourself do not consider yourself disabled. I do. 
Okay. But it's Sweet. in the middle. It's the stable wood and the normal wood. So do you feel some like sense of camaraderie between you and Joe Spanos and Frank Bodie? Like, is it you guys against the world? Like, is there a sense of unity there? Or is it more or less every man for his or herself? I absolutely have no... I have, I've always seen myself separate from them. Really? So you would never start a band with them? Dude, you have no idea. It's like when Joe Spanos and Flake Tony are together, they, they do the three stooges thing. Doink, boink, doink. And then you come in poking his stomach. <laughs> whoop, 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 yes. whoop. No, I said, you have twins in there. Oh, I say. That, say it into the microphone. Don't just whisper no, no, it. No, I, I have to do it because this is, I do sure. lip, lip things. It's like, uh, you, you. He, Joe Spanos knows what so, I'm saying. So I do it so <laughs> often. So I don't know if the microphone. I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but I'm going to say uh, Ross whispers in Ross Joe's ear. He, he says, useless. you're useless. And pathetic. And pathetic. How, and how nice! Pathetic. But you yeah. don't. But you don't. But you don't hate him. You just like to whisper in his ear that he's useless. I, I and don't pathetic. hate him. I actually do respect him. I just oh, want that, him. I like your style. You poke the guy in the stomach and then tell him he's useless and pathetic. But I'm trying to. It motiv- sounds like some bondage shit to me. But I'm trying to, you know, motivate him to make a better person. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> Bill, you know, he's an amazing artist, right? Uh, oh, for oh, dude, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Joe Spanos. Yeah. Frank Bodie, not so much, yeah. but what about uh, what's his name, Bill? Oh my the god, schizophrenic, right? He's a Bill fucking... Rogers. Yeah. How do you even know who? Uh, did you work at? Jewel? He's at the gas station no, every day, dude. I know. Fucking, I've got my. I've read the writing on the wall. I've Bill, got my B- finger on the pulse. B- Bill reminds me of SpongeBob for some reason. I don't know if it's his glasses and how he talks, or, and he shows up everywhere. Kind of like Spongebob. But. Well, it's a reason why he does this. Because he, he is schizophrenic. Yeah. So it, for his treatment, he, he, he walks around. He goes all over the place. That's how he helps his uh, schizophrenic. So that's sure. his tr- treatment. Schi- that's what you have to do when you're schizophrenic? You just that's keep walking? That's what he does. It keeps himself busy. Okay. So when you say schizophrenic, you, you're here, with him... But for him it's, it's paranoia schizophrenia. So he, it he's is? very paranoid. Shit. He's very paranoid. He's scared of everything. That's gotta fucking suck. Yeah. Where's he's you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Well he doesn't it's complicated. I, what he does is helps him a lot. What's you know How do how do you know this? People, you know, I relate to people. Every, no, I'm not saying no, I'm saying how do you know that he has this? He tells you know He's told you that? Yeah. I don't hate people I, w- I work with. This is such, Do you ever whisper in his ear that he's useless and pathetic? It's Joe Spanos. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just Joe. Yeah. Just Joe. Okay. Uh, Bill's got enough voices whispering to him. Yeah. Well, that's the, the, those are uh, jokes. The jokes? Yeah. Oh, oh, I had two more that I that I was going to... Yeah. Um, you you want to hold buns over there. No, this is just a book that I want to mention. That was going to be the offensive part. The Cards Against Humanity thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, but but, I, but I'll finish with the joke. So the, the second Are one was free. Soon. <laughs> that Ross Thank is you, ready Ross. to get out of here. Thank you, yeah, I'm not ready. Go. I'm I'm good, man. Ross, right. will you sing us a song? No. So really, I was gonna say uh, the 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 next one was with, oh yeah, the next one I was gonna pitch for stand up was that, yeah, I'm I'm I, as most people know me that I don't have good memory, and that I forget things a lot and i think it's really dumb that people have these old ideals that oh he didn't remember who i was you know you, you know i've run it you know i went to a recent party like two years ago where just like that that whole murder shack crew this punk house that i used to hang out they all met up there and some girl was like hey do, do you know do you know who nicole kirsch was uh, yeah you did you do yeah okay i don't know how, how do you how did you her, I, I don't. Um, she was way, 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 way young. Yeah. And had who was she going out with, and who didn't know she was way, 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 way young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not Scott Deering, but like someone else. I, I, I knew nothing about her. All I knew was that we'd hang out at this fucking punk shack. 
I think maybe and Colin Couch. You're losing me, yeah. Well, well. Anyways, the, I I never knew her until I was until like four or five years ago, and the reason and I hung out at this punk shack and she just started showing up, and she's like, uh, and weird thing is she lived a block away from me, and and I guess she was just like fucking sixteen, seventeen, while we're there fucking 24 26 and she's just going there to sort of mooch off beer and shit and just wanted to fuck everybody and she was like a hundred pounds and then i i saw her at a party two three years ago she's like a hundred hundred fifty pounds bigger she's like you don't know me it's nicole and i'm like i don't think i'm like well there's a dress like not even the visual aspect is anything fucking reminding of me because because you look like a different person, you know? But anyways, I don't get how people get offended by that. So one day my girlfriend came in the house. This is the joke I was going to pitch that she comes in the house with a woman who I don't recognize. And I'm like, well, okay, but she sort of looks familiar. So I wait till my girlfriend goes to the bathroom. And then I go to the girl. I'm like, hey, don't you, you look like someone I know. <laughs> yeah, real, real quick. Don't uh, wait. Didn't you used to be like a huge cunt back in the day? For like a while, you were like a huge cunt. And oh yeah, no, didn't I like have? My, didn't I like could fit my whole arm in your vagina? Like I, I, I almost said I could fit my whole body in there. It's fucking, it's stinking there. I had to get out of there. <laughs> and, and then the lady, the woman goes, you know, you could have just said hi, mom. How are things, mom? And I said, oh, no, I'm not calling you mommy. You, no, no, I'm fucking taking, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, there's there's I my... Th- I think that joke could work. Yeah, And then the, and then the Edwin was talking about my forgetfulness. Uh, well, my father has... Oh, b- what was I talking about? Your father has dementia. No, yeah. No, that's part of the joke. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> no, the, the, so, so, the, so I found out that my father had dementia. And this is actually a true story. All of this happened, so it's kind of a story. But he, um, I met, I, I ran into him again four years ago at a hospital, and I didn't know he had dementia. And he kept calling me, so I'm like, oh, you know, after the first twenty calls, ah, uh, we're just bonding. He's just excited. And then after the next forty, oh God, he loves me. And then about after the next eighty or a hundred and twenty. You guys, uh, I guess maybe some people would be crazy and call back, but I just ended up forgetting about him for about two years because cause I'm a forgetful person. Sure. And then two years later, I come back, and they're like, oh, yeah, he has dementia. I'm like, oh, that's why that crazy motherfucker's calling me nonstop, and I have to put him on auto-reject. Well, they called me to come get him because they said that he, you're, I, I forgot the terming, you're the... Uh, last, uh, like, like next you're, of kin. Next of kin, exactly, be- because he he does, he's not in the state of mind to be able to to make judgments through life and make decisions. And uh, I'm like, you trying to say he can't take it, kill his affairs? Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, he, can, he can't. But that that's the legal word wording for it. And and uh-huh. he um, there you know, I have to make his decisions for him. So like a good forgiving son who's met his dad and now has his next of kin, I tried to rob him blind. And naturally, uh, uh, he used to be a jeweler. So I was like, oh, man, he probably has all that shit. And unfortunately, I met his girlfriend who uh, had told me that, yes, he has. uh, uh, I already robbed him blind. She reassured me. And I said, oh, well, no worries. I'm like, how do I know that you're you know, how do I know that that you did? He, He seems completely normal. She's like, oh, well, he already forgot. He's got dementia, motherfucker. I'm like, oh, okay. So then um, I'm like, all right, well, I forgot about him for another year. You're fucked up, dude. You were talking about your father with having dementia. You know? um, if we're being completely honest, mm-hmm. Ross, I wish you would stop making so many anti-Semitic jokes. I was not making any end. Dude, you were being pretty harsh. On what? The Jews. I was not saying anything. Yeah, dude, no. You were there and just, you were ripping on them. 
and it's the fifth evening of Hanukkah, and I really just wish you would let it go. Okay, um, Bale. Stop it. <laughs> uh, no, I want you to stop it. <sighs> like, I don't know what your issue is, but, like, just leave the Jews alone. Okay, Bale. All right. I love the Jews. What do you like about them? What's your favorite song? And now I'm a little pissed off. Why? Now I... What are you pissed off about? Well, let us know. I thought we're being honest here. It's a safe space. I would love to talk about it about the Jews. I I have close. People I know who are Jews, you like, you just excuse me of hating the Jews. All right, so here's a solemn promise from this moment on we're just not going to make fun of the Jews anymore. Like, Absolutely not. They've been through enough. Yes, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. So here's a solemn pact we'll not make fun of them. No. Ross, I'm going to hold you to that. All right. All right. Well, so I was saying about bad memory and dementia. <laughs> sure. Right? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I was saying that how this is a completely true story. I, I was finding out about how I hadn't seen my father in years. The first time I see him, uh, he didn't. I didn't really know. I I don't even know where I left off. But he was. Um, I was trying to. I was trying to see in the hospital. What like what was going on and shit. And I me I you know I meet him. I haven't talked to him in years since I was a kid. This is about four years ago. And I didn't. I didn't really know what was uh what what was his new story and everything. I I hadn't seen him in a while. And um. After the first twenty calls, he's like, you know. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, he's just bonding. He what was a, calling you. Yeah. 20 times he didn't answer. I'm like, oh, he's just bonding. What? A, I'll call him back. Sure. Then after the first 40, I'm like, uh, he's just excited. Oh, he loves me. Sure. And then, and then after the, the next 80, I was just, uh, Wait, did I, I he ever leave voicemails? He would. I, uh, and they were all the same. Hey, can you get me some cigarettes? It was the exact one every single time. Okay. I don't think he changed. Some pitch. messages one yeah. through forty were all. Yeah. Hello, Phil. Bring me a cigarette. Yes. Yes. Was that a pretty good accent? Was that 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 was spot on? That was yeah. That was it. Okay. And and he uh. I I ended up. One I I I ended up forgetting about him for like a year. Then I come back in a year and i'm just like holy shit like you know this guy i don't even know what the fuck i was saying holy shit that you were talking about your father yeah this guy's in the hospital yeah dementia no it's done it's done it's all good that uh, I'll, I'll move on to the next topic because i don't remember where i was going with this all i right. was flowing but anyways, so let's get on to the the most offensive part of the show, right? <laughs> sure, perfect. More yeah, of correct. Ross's anti Semitic jokes. Yep. Yep. So so I guess uh my my girlfriend, she signed up for this Cards Against Humanity thing. Yeah. Where they send you updated cards based on like current and the most recent topics. Sure. And Cards Against Humanity is like Apples to apples, but like yeah. racier, right? Yeah. I honestly I don't even remember. I played it like five times, but I always forget how to play it. But it's like there's something in the middle that's like something you would never show to your mother. And then like everyone has like a deck cards, of cards in their yeah, hand with a statement. And it's in like it. it's like Anne Frank or your penis or Captain America or Yeah. You know all that. Okay, and then so, and then what happens? You vote on who has the best. There's a judge each round. Okay, okay. and you can either judge based on like most. Appropriate oh, so it's or, like that fibbage sort of. I oh. 
think. Yeah. I think, but I've never played Cards Against Humanity. Okay, so so the so this season she got a new deck okay. with a guidebook about politics. Oh, let's, good. Let's see here. Sure. They, so they have a bunch of polls, and I was just wondering Wait, what, you, really? what you think about. Yeah, there, there's a all guidebook right. on all these polls, and I want to know what you guys think of these polls. All right, sure. sure. So it says here 53% of Americans would rather be dumb and happy, and 47% would rather be smart and sad. What do you guys think? Oh, that's interesting. Dumb and happy. I would say dumb and I would. I, I, I think I would rather be... Yeah, dumb and happy. Well, I have a different. I want to know what Bill's answer is to this. I'm gonna go with. Uh, man, that's a tough one. I'm gonna go with the dumb and happy. Yeah. But even if you're dumb, you think you're smart. Like I don't think there's a single person out there that's like, well, yeah, I'm dumb, but I'm happy. It's like, no. You know, you know what I feel like about this. What to me, and maybe I'm overthinking something cheesy and soppy like this. But dumb, what it, what it, what is dumb? What is smart? Book smart? Because I'd rather be much wise. I'd rather be wise and happy than smart and happy. Well, so, I'd rather be happy than sad. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> and that. That's what this thing tells me. To me, smart smartness. It's just based on pretension. So. Th- th- what this to me says is, are, would you rather be happy or sad? I mean, who gives a fuck about being, to me, smart and sad is like a lot of, I don't know if you're being s- serious earlier, but like the PC culture where it's like, oh, I, I, I've I, got, I'm informed and I've done this research because media told me. Well, so, I don't think, I feel like they're mutually exclusive. Like if you're smart and you're well informed about things, you realized like how fucked up everything is, mm-hmm. so you can't be, you can't be smart and happy. So it's like, uh, I I'd rather be happy. Like, Are you yeah. feeling happy? Well, is yeah. that a Slipknot song? That's a Mudvayne song. Uh, all right, I, how does it go? Uh, I can't sing it. Yes, you can. You just sing it. Sing it again. All, all the choruses. Are you feeling happy? Keep going. I don't know the lyrics. I just know. I the almost chorus. remember it, dude. Just keep singing that yeah. chorus. Da, na, 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 na. It's very similar. Wait, yeah, is dude. that the one? It's like I. No, it's not crawling, no. not falling down. No. I'm. I'm I'm not crawling. I'm not crawling. Falling down. Yeah. But that's not the song. No, that's... uh, uh I, I know that's from Ghost Ship. Sure. Of course. And the song that you're talking about is... what? What is the chorus again? Are you feeling happy? I can do it in my head, the, the, the drums and the guitar. But you have to do it with your mouth. Can I... Can I yeah, yeah, do it with your mouth. Da-na-na-na. Da-na-na. Are you feeling happy? Da-na. Are you yeah. feeling happy? I, I I just hear more of the guitars in the the one chord. Wait, this. how does the guitar go though? Da-na-na-na. Ah, fuck it. Can I set that as my ringtone? What you just did? No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so let's see what's next here. Political breakdown. Percent who'd rather be dumb and happy. 41% Democrats would rather be dumb and happy. 56 independent, 64 Republican. I don't know what Wait, that what? means. what? Of the people that are dumb and happy? Yeah, of people who would rather be dumb and happy. Republicans, 64%. Independence fifty six percent, Democrats forty one percent. Wait, that doesn't make any sense because that's like one hundred sixty percent. Yeah, well, it's saying out of a hundred percent of Republicans, every Democrat, they're like, no, I'd rather be smart and sad. Yeah, and then out of every Independent, fifty one percent of them were like, 
Okay. Uh, they'd be dumb and happy. Yeah. I gotcha. And then most of Republican would rather be dumb and happy. I gotcha. Up. Oh, Ross is playing a video. No, we can't play that. Dude, they're going to block it out in the video. No, it's an advertisement. Yeah, but the song we can't play. And besides Ross singing. No. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I just know. People who prefer being smart and sad are more likely to accept the change. What was that? The, I, I don't uh Let me see here. Next, we ask course respondents. Wait, whether, no, no, no. What was that bit? You just, people that are more likely to be. Uh, it says here, people who prefer being smart and sad are more likely to accept the scientific consensus on climate change. Percent who'd rather be dumb and happy. So, sounds a like a Republican. Percent who'd rather be dumb. Real caused by people. 40%. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what it means. I'm right. sorry. No, no, cool. so then it says, next we asked respondents whether they thought it was likely or unlikely that robots would take their job in the next decade. 20% likely, 80% unlikely. I say unlikely for my own. Yeah, I like, say unlikely because of taxes, because people, I mean. Well, and plus my job, I work in. HR, customer relations. Yeah. Like, I feel like you kind of need that human touch. So I say, like, nah. I don't think that... I think if ro a robot could definitely take my job, it's a possibility, but it w the government wouldn't allow it. Definitely people, robots can take my job. All right. So what does the paper say about that statistic? What is the paper? Yeah. What you're reading? Yeah. About what statistic? Yeah, oh, Ross's job. Oh, Ross's job. Robots are going to take it. Robots are, it says, percentage of robots. Taking retail jobs. And, and, and humans who would take Ross's job 100%. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I agree with the data. Let, let's see what else here. Is it just sorry? I don't. Are you like flipping through a big newspaper? No, no. This, like, this is this is just a small guidebook. Like it's like a, literally a game thing. I don't even know if this is like reliable. And I think that's weird because like, Cards Against Humanity is supposed to be like a fun like. Yeah. Oh my God, we're having fun. Well, I, I do think it's weird. I I think it's fucking sick that the shit that people are bitching about these days, like they're taking these politics into like a fun game. Well, it's not even part of the game. Like, so if you and I are well, playing well, well, cards against humanity, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't make a difference if we'd rather be smart or happy, right? Yeah. So why the fuck is that in the game manual? Because because this is uh the theme is pulse of the nation, the theme is politics. All the cards that are being mailed. Right, but like the cards are being mailed, like have no relation to like yeah they survey they results right. Oh, a lot, a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of the cards. For example, it says um, one of the cards. Uh, one of the cards said something like a, a gay Republican who is going to lead the country, or a gay, uh, a gay Republican is going to win the presidency. Is one of the cards. <laughs> you know. Did you, did you know there was a senator, so, the senator um, in Virginia? There's one who's a transsexual. What? Yes. No. Unbelievable, and no. she's. I have to say, she, she's a, she is also a, a, a medical And now you're public. being offensive. Is it she or he? She. Is it? Is she Jewish? I don't know. <sighs> now now you guys are looking. But I, I, honestly, the first uh, transsexual, you know, in Virginia. Hey, is if they do their job good, I don't give a fuck what they are. Yeah, right? I, in a state I, like it, Virginia. It, but it's just bullshit when, when you get a job. Just for being a minority, like just for diversity. And that's what I'm trying to say. Be, being a transsexual is definitely a nominee. Is what? An anomaly? Please. I am i can't pronounce the word. It, was that it, though? I, well, I was trying to help you. A nominee. Be, be, okay. A white Normandy? Person. Shut the fuck up. Dude, 
we're trying to help you here. Yeah, we're not like being hateful. What? What? Uh, I'm not gonna. No, you guys have been. No, no, no. Like seriously, we're not. Can you spell it out? Okay, when a lot of when a lot of ways is is um is more than others. A minority. A minority. Yes. Okay, got you. So it's a, so you're saying it's a minority for that to happen. Okay, for the first transsexual senator. Yeah. Oh, for sure that's a minority. Yes. Yeah, well, if it's the first, then yeah, that, yes, is, that and, is a minority. And she is a, it play, is a, in a, is a metal guitarist. She's a metal guitarist? Yes. In what band? It's nothing famous. Is, it, is this out of the onion? I'm not even kidding. Look, look, at, look, look. You're going to make me look it up again. Bill, look it up. No. no. Are you going to type it? No? Russ has got it. Okay. Next anyway. Next. Yeah. Keep moving on. Next one we got, we asked, see in this, how does this have to do with politics? We asked people whether it is okay to pee in the shower, which it is. It's not a big, it's not a big deal, folks. It all ends up in the same place. That's what it, okay. So is it acceptable to pee in the shower? No. 43% acceptable, 57 unacceptable. What do you guys think? I think, I think definitely. And that's an allusion to a Seinfeld episode. You think unacceptable? No, I think it's totally acceptable. But I think that most people would say unacceptable. You know what I mean? How about you, Ross? Acceptable. Same here, acceptable. And then it, and then <laughs> per, percent who are okay with peeing in the shower, 56% of millennials, 43 Gen X, 37% boomers. Hmm. Here, here, here's the most completely irrelevant, ridiculous one. That, poll percent who are okay with peeing in the shower: thirty-four percent blacks, forty-three percent whites, forty-nine uh, Latino, fifty-five percent Asian. Which says a lot about golden shower videos. That's. That's just what. Like, why is that in there? I don't know. Like, it's a board game, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, here it is, broken down by race. Yep. Or ethnicity. Man, that's cool. Ross, where are you at? I'm looking for that uh, transsexual senator. In the meantime, will you sing us a song? No. Can I sing a song? Go ahead. Virginia transsexual... Virginia transsexual, he or she is close to you Virginia or I. Transsexual standard. I'm picking up what I'm saying. Can you look on your phone? I sure can. Because it seems right. like your phone is understanding better than my phone. Do you know the state? Virginia. And do you know the position? Um, Sando or Connors? All right. Transsexual politician from Virginia. I can search the web for that. Uh, that. Transsexual politician. I can search the web. She Transsexual sure Virginia. <laughs> search that for you and I, I give transsexual up. West Virginia <laughs> <laughs> I can search the web yeah I think you're full of shit Ross I, I think I'm I not. think you fucked with us enough no okay okay what are we wrapping this up no Ross agrees that he's been fucked with us but I think maybe we should wrap this up We've been doing it for a few hours now. Yep, we've. I feel like, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. I feel like we've healed some old wounds. Yeah. Um, Ross, are you feeling good? I'm feeling awesome. I think I'm ready to go home. I'm jealous of you. What is it? What is it like to feel awesome? I don't know. I don't always feel awesome. How's it feel to be awesome? No, you just said you felt awesome. So how does it feel? 
If it was great. All right. Can you can you describe it? Nope. There's, you you got to be Roscoe to understand how it feel. If, <sighs> if you had to pick any song that translates to how you feel right now, what song would that be? I don't know. So. Who? Are, okay. No, here's the question. You were all like ready to go to metal shows. But you like music other than metal, right? Yeah. So what is, and this is for all of our fans out there, like what is the most surprising artist that you like? Like the least Roscoe band that you like? Do you, like, are you into ABBA? Nope. All right, so what is like your guilty pleasure? What is something you don't want anyone to know but you're about to tell everyone right here, right now. You like Rod Stewart? Ooh, God, so good. Roscoe? Rod, I, I think Roscoe's mom's at. Texting him to see if he's in bed. Is, who is toying with, with Menacely? Are we still looking for the Virginia was, transsexual? We saw Ministry. Yeah. No, it's um So yeah. what is So what's like your left field like I'm music to find taste? It. You don't you don't know them. You're just new searching. Artists, new artists. Josie Fox. Who is Josie Fox? Chelsea Fox. Chelsea Fox. Who is Chelsea Fox? Do they have any popular songs? She she's a um new, she's a female. Okay. Uh, how do you spell ministry? M I N I S T R Y. And I can say that again if you'd like. Also, I don't think ministry counts as like a left field. Yeah, that's still music. metal. Like that's still. What what what's one of your fair bands that isn't metal? Yeah, I'm trying to find who. Chelsea she, Fox. Well, she's metal. No, she's uh, not metal. Well, if she's opening up for ministry, it's metal. Come Ross. on, like something that How do you like spell Chelsea. Ross, um, is she opening up for ministry? C H E L S E A is how it's normally spelled. Got it. Is she opening up for ministry? All right, Ross. Come on now. Um, can't do it right now. Yeah, do it right now. I want to hear her. And we won't get blocked. No, we won't get blocked. Is that her? Is that Chelsea? Sounds like metal to me. Yep, sounds like old Marilyn Manson to me. <laughs> it don't like the drugs, but the Shut drugs the like it's some me. Some queen of the damned shit. This is metal still. Then I give up. I actually love her. But. Okay. All right, all right. Well, Enough, Chelsea. But is there, like, anyone you like that's not metal? Like, is there one that's like, this is totally not me? Like, did you have an identity crisis when you're like, oh, my God, I just love Wannabe by the Spice Girls? And it doesn't have to be that song. But do you know what I mean? Queen of Stone Age. That's still kind of right. Is that it? Is that? Did you guys hear about Queens of the Stone Age recently? No. Uh, how they're not good live. <laughs> yeah. No, Bill, you haven't heard this? That the that you know the singer's a huge douche, right? What Josh Hom? Yeah. Yeah. How he thinks he's the shit. Mm-hmm. He 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 booted uh a camera person in the face and they're suing him. Really? Yeah. Fuck him. Death metal of of of, of I think it's a big deal because it was a chick that that he kicked in the face. The camera person? Yeah. So that man of, of, of he was a dick. He's, he's always he's been. Al a he dick. Is, he's always a dick. 
And it's like, I don't know. It could have been an accident, but because he has such a shitty reputation. Yeah, yeah. You want him to get fucked. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Like, burn in hell. Yeah, I I don't even want to know if it's if it's like, you know, put through court, do do process the right way. No, he's gonna settle out of court. Yeah, of course. He he doesn't deserve due process with his like ego. He's because you know that band from beginning to end has always been like, oh, it's that background band. You'll hear it on a fucking video game soundtrack. Yeah. But Josh thinks they're the best band in the fucking world. You know. Sure. Did uh, you know the uh, his uh, side band Def- Eagles of Death Metal? Yeah. You know what happened with them in France, right? <laughs> no. Uh, what happened to them in France? A shooting. A shooting? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, I think I heard about oh, that. Oh yeah, I think that that a bunch of Or just like a real little thing. Okay, that's I think we need to cut it right now. We need to cut it? Yeah. What do you think, Bill? Um yeah, let's cut it. Okay. Anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been yet another edition of Hear Nothing. See nothing. Roscoe. Say nothing. <laughs> I and wish he'd be more of a team player. Yeah, come on. And you, you didn't have to. There's no an, no anti-Semitic stuff at the end. <laughs> right. Thanks for having me got, again. It means a lot to me. That Of course, Ross. Yeah. You're one of our favorites. Yeah. And we'll see you say, soon. Yeah, we, uh, I'll be back soon. happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Happy so, Hanukkah. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm convinced. <laughs> Yeah, fucked up, dude.